looks almost like it's red shifted. Is that right? You know, just like when a siren goes by you on the street. As it's moving away, the sound waves get lower and lower. <laughs> lower and lower. that is, that's because the actual sound waves are being stretched. The sound waves themselves are having to travel a further distance. just that the sound waves are reaching you less often, and so you experience that oral sensation in your ears, right, in your ears, as a lower frequency. Well, what does that have to do with the end of the universe? I'll tell you. at the end of time, um, based, based heavily on this guy Isaac Arthur's channel, which I suggest you go check out if you're, you're into the Kardashev scale and, um, just really just anything futurism, science and futurism, it's such a fantastic channel. In that concept about possibly harvesting the matter that's left in the form mostly of black holes after the star formation period. 
of our universe. And that whole concept is really a stellar one. But seriously, we will exist for a long time, but the universe undoubtedly, hmm, there might be some doubt, might exist for longer than we will. Depends how evolved we get. If we actually get to the point where maybe we're juggling, metaphorically of course, galaxies. But... There's four ways in this article here, which is on curiosity.com, by the way, a really cool website, that the universe most likely will come to an end. And um, I've printed out inside our book here a few pages from this article, and uh, I'll read them right out of the book. And let's see. First one is closing time. We know that the universe won't last forever because we can look back in time and see how it's changed. Light takes time to travel distances in our universe actually is so spread out that even though light travels around the earth seven times in one second, it takes eight minutes for it to reach our sun earth and us from the sun. It takes four years to reach the nearest other star, and it takes 150 to 200,000 years to travel all the way across our galaxy. In just a mere two million years after that, to hit the largest local galaxy to us, Andromeda, Andromeda, Andromeda. So, the light, because of that, I lost my train of thought for a second, and what that means is light taking that long to travel means that the light we receive in our eyeballs right I need to uh, I need to really put you to sleep so I want you looking right at the camera for this okay the light that you're seeing in your eyeballs right now is being emitted from your laptop tablet, phone screen, whatever, TV or projector if you're really fancy, or a VR headset, and it's immediately hitting your eyes, at least to our interpretation of what is, what constitutes immediacy. But on our time scales, seconds is roughly pretty immediate, and millions or billions of a second is about how long it would take for the eye, your eye to perceive and be hit by the uh, light, the photons emitted from your device. But if we're watching Andromeda, we're seeing things from two million years ago. So what that means is that things that we know are billions of years in the out billions of light years out in the universe, we're perceiving them, if we're looking at them, as they were billions of years ago. And what we see, let's see here, is that galaxies used to be very, very close together. And everything has been moving away from everything else faster and faster. And so, the inevitable conclusion to that extrapolation of logic is that the universe will eventually dissipate. Everything will grow 
So just as we hear sirens uh, pitch, shift downward, our light that we view from billions of years away, because the space in between the galaxies is stretching and is in some way we don't quite understand, it's redshifting, it's redshifting all that light. some sort of substance or field that exerts a sort of reverse gravity. fate of our universe. 
and entropy is just the tendency for particles to get more chaotic and disassemble and decay rather than combine and um, I guess it's the tendency for things to it's just the general tendency for things to get disorderly and I suppose order is a very arbit it's a it's a technical term I guess but uh, yeah anyways it's one of the laws of thermodynamics that heat never if you have a glass of cold water and a glass of hot water and you pour them together the motion will never be segregated overall the motion that we define heat as those little particles fleeting the motion will never be segregated into separate sides of the container so you'll never have one container of touching liquid that is separated into one hot and one cold side if you give the particles long enough to interact with each other so We have the big crunch. We assume that dark energy is pretty much leveled off to become a constant force. Um, that's, that was Einstein's constant. He thought it was his biggest plunder to uh, insert right into the equations. The equations of general relativity. The idea that there must be something keeping the uh, galaxies apart from one another and why they would not just coalesce into some large supermassive black hole centered galaxy who knows Einstein had an idea though so the idea behind the big crunch is that maybe this concept of of uh, dark energy pulling apart the galaxies or pushing apart the galaxies maybe this concept it's not fully understood, and perhaps it's a diminishing force, and if it were to weaken to a point where it couldn't any longer counteract the force of gravity, what we would have then, then is a big crunch. Galaxies would get closer and closer together, and they would fly by other and oscillate and whirl around and the galaxy sized black holes would continue to eat and pull and suck everything into itself it would get larger and larger perhaps until it reached some full final limit and then who knows maybe a new big Now the third way is called the big rip in the heat death of the universe. Dark energy is more or less constant. In the big crunch it weakens. In the big rip, dark energy gets stronger. So 
right now the concept of dark energy is that the local gravity and local dynamics between all the stars, that gravity is too powerful and overpowers any type of expansion, expansion, expansion. stars that have coalesced into our current universe and our, the galaxies. The galaxies in our current universe have a, they're pretty much, um, they've overpowered that big
whether from one side of the wall or so randomly that it's from one side of the universe to another. And that would be bad. Because a true vacuum has different constants of nature than a false vacuum. And our constants, the ones we know in math, like pi and phi and um, all these really tons of constants, um, are so many numbers, Planck's constant, and they hold the fundamental structures of atomic, subatomic, and macroscopic things together in the way that we're familiar with and that our equations work with. And if that was disintegrated, that would be a total annihilation of our universe. Alright guys, well, that is going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to leave you on that bright and optimistic note. shifting and you'll be out of that blue state in no time no time at all I just want to thank all of you guys for supporting the channel and watching and um, just all the love you guys constantly throw at me seriously it means the world and um, sorry this one's a little short but I hope you guys enjoy it nonetheless sync this up. We are doing the usual syncing up routine. Syncing it, not bathtubbing it or showering it. 